no matter where your family is financially, I think we can all agree it's great to save money where we can. And with homeschooling, that is no different. If we can find ways to stay on our budget and stay on track with the expenses that come with homeschooling, that is awesome. And in many states, there's no assistance for those of us who homeschool. And many of us like it that way because then we can homeschool our kids in the way that we see fit with very little interference from outside sources. But that creates a challenge, of course, especially if you are living on a budget. Now, our family has definitely gone through years where money has been tighter than others, where we've had things where we've needed to invest money into, and we've had to watch our expenses. As my kids moved into high school, I noticed that a lot of the curriculum was more expensive. The materials we needed were more expensive. The extras that we had to have were more expensive. And I believe in trying to stay on our budget, trying to save money where we can while still giving a quality education to my kids. So this video is part two of a series that I'm doing on how to homeschool on a budget. If you missed my initial video, I will link it up here for you. And in that video, I gave six general tips on homeschooling on a budget, things that our family have been doing for years, things that have helped us to stay on track and not, you know, blow the whole piggy bank when it comes to our homeschooling supplies. But today I wanted to focus specifically on things we have done in order to stay on track with our budget during the high school years. Tip number one has to do with saving on electronics. As my kids moved into high school, they needed more and more access to the computers. Initially, we just had my desktop computer and I picked up a laptop when my daughter was entering her freshman year. And then as my son entered high school, it was getting a little dicey having everybody share that, that computer because oftentimes I was doing work on my computer and they both were needing the laptop. So we made the decision to go ahead and purchase a second laptop. And computers in general are just expensive. So how is it that we saved on that? Well, first of all, I found out that I could get an educator discount on computers. So we are a big Apple family. We, we prefer Apple products for a lot of reasons that I, I won't get into, but I knew we wanted to stay with them. And Apple does have um, educator pricing, and that is for students who are either entering or in college, but also it includes educators and homeschoolers of all levels. So I was actually able to get student pricing on both of those laptops through Apple. And you can look around for education discounts if you prefer to use like PC computers or, um, or like HP or another brand of computer. But a lot of the different companies will offer student pricing on computers. Now that most likely is not gonna be the computer with all of the bells and whistles. It's not gonna be the greatest one out there, but we needed it for school. We needed them to be able to type up their papers, do research, watch the videos that went along with their courses, do their online courses. And so it was a great way for us to save money while doing that. The second thing I did to save money was to look for sibling discounts. Now, oftentimes these are offered when you have courses that are online. So for a specific example, I'm gonna talk about Shorman Math. So both of my kids are doing Shorman Math courses online and they offer a fantastic, fantastic sibling discount. So you purchase the course initially and if you have another student, and it doesn't matter how many years later, that is going to take the same course, then you can get that course at a discount. So for example, my daughter is taking pre-calculus this year. Uh, right now, the price on their website is like $139 for the course, just to buy that course. But if when my son takes that course, which he will be doing next year, the sibling discount, it's only $39. That is $100 off for the same course. So definitely look for sibling discounts with the different companies because that can be an amazing money saver in your homeschool. Science courses are another area where things just really got expensive in high school. Now we love to do labs for all of our science courses. And as somebody who majored in biology and chemistry, I believe that labs are a great way to learn. And so I definitely wanted to make sure that for whatever curriculum we had, we had the materials we needed for those. Now I made the decision to purchase um, the pre-packaged lab kits that went with curriculum. And I have shopped from Nature's Workshop and Home Science Tools. And when you first order those, you might go, that seems a little bit expensive. But here is one of the great things is that I found that most of the materials are reusable for the following year. There were very few things in any of those kits that either we could not reuse and I had to like gather replacements for, or that it didn't provide enough of it to where we couldn't use it the following year. So for example, chemistry. 
The chemistry course includes things like a Bunsen burner and then you need the denatured alcohol for that. You've got beakers, you've got like all of these different things that you use. Plus you have bottles of different types of um, chemical materials that you're gonna need for the labs. So we had purchased that and I thought, oh, well, I'm gonna have to like purchase all of this stuff again for my son the following year. But after doing the labs with my daughter, uh, her year of chemistry, I actually had so much left over of those different materials we just used them again <laughs> for my son. And so he'll basically kind of use those up in the labs this year and I didn't have to buy it again. Same thing went with our biology labs. So my daughter did like the microscope labs with the slide kits. We reused those again with my son. The only thing I ended up purchasing twice were the dissections because my daughter obviously did those one year and my son did them the next. Now dissection kits can definitely be pricey. Um, apparently it costs quite a bit to preserve little animals and send them to you. But if you want to save money in that regard, or if you have a student who's like really squeamish about dissections, there are a lot of really great YouTube videos out there where somebody's actually doing the dissection and you can just watch it and follow along. And that is just a great alternative if you know buying those dissection kits is not in your budget or you just don't really want your kids dissecting frogs on your kitchen table. That brings me to my next tip, which is reusing curriculum where it makes sense to. And I say that because not every student is the same. Not every student has the same career goals, the same learning styles. And we have definitely seen that in our homeschool where what worked for my daughter is not going to work for my son. And so we've had to make a change. But there have been many subjects where we have been able to reuse the same textbooks, for one student and the other. And when we get things like the test booklets, a lot of times you can you know, make photocopies and be able to have extra copies of those tests or they have printable worksheets so I can print them out for each student. And that is really nice to be able to do. Um, the one thing that we tend to have to buy for each student are student workbooks. But in that case, I often will look for really good sales, especially if I know, like I know for sure that I'm gonna use that curriculum for more than one child. If I see like workbooks at a great price, I'll go ahead and I'll buy two. That way I have one for each of the kids and it's ready to go when we get to that. So reusing curriculum when you can from one student to the next. Now I did touch upon this tip in my original budget video, but that is using multi-purpose curriculum because in high school there are lots of great courses out there that can count for multiple credits. Couple of examples. My Kids both like to use literature-based curriculum. We use Guest Hollow courses. My daughter is doing one course from them called Government Econ Personal Finance. She is getting a government credit, an econ credit, a personal finance credit, and a logic credit. That's four credits from one class. And so I purchased that one curriculum. We've gotten the books for her to read along with it, but it is covering multiple subjects. A lot of their other courses too include a lot of different types of novels, whether those are fiction or nonfiction novels. And that is a great way if you wanted to turn that course into an English course as well. It's very easy to find novel studies to go along with many of the books that they include in their program. In fact, for a lot of the novels in their schedule, they will actually tell you where you can get free study guides to go along with those novels. Then assign a paper at the end of it or some sort of a report and bingo you have literature covered along with a history course or even a science course. Next is saving on electives. There are so many different topics that you can cover for electives in your homeschool, from philosophy to psychology, mental health, nutrition, woodworking. I mean, there's so many different things you can do. Now, there are courses out there for some of those that you can purchase, but electives are a great way to just create your own course. If your student has a passion for a subject and wants to study it, you can find different books and materials, even just at your local library or free online, or maybe purchase just one or two books to make kind of the spine or the base of that curriculum. You could also find resources on documentaries, free videos on YouTube, and different online resources, and just create that elective. I am currently in the process of doing that for an elective for one of my kids for next year. It was one that I just couldn't find anything that I really liked or that I really felt was worth the money. And so we're just gonna make it ourselves. And that is a great way to help them, help them be able to do those electives without breaking the bank for it. Kind of along those lines would be helping them look for different types of internships or on the job training, especially if you have a student who wants to go into like a technical field. 
So one of my kids has expressed interest in possibly going into something along the lines of construction or electric work. And those would be things where we can try to find him some technical training programs or people that he can job shadow or work alongside, learn those skills, get that credit. That is a huge bonus there. So if you have connections through family and friends to people who have particular skill sets that your kids might be interested in learning about, see if you can work with them and have that student go a couple days a week or a couple times a month and be able to start learning those skills and count that for high school credit. Now this last tip is something that we haven't done yet, but we have it on our plan for next year, and that is dual enrollment at one of our state schools. And I say state school because it's so much cheaper to take courses in college if you're in state than if they are out of state. And we are all about trying to get those college credits, get a quality education, but also save some money where we can. Now we are really fortunate because we have a couple of schools locally that offer a wide variety of courses. They work really well with homeschooling students, whether they wanna take those courses online or in person. And I've spoken with representatives from different universities in the state that my kids might be interested in attending to find out hey, will these credits transfer? Because the last thing we wanna do is pay for a dual enrollment class and then not have it transfer anywhere. So we got confirmation that we are good to go with that. And then there's the fact that those courses are so inexpensive to do during high school. So this kind of helps you save a little bit in high school and quite a lot in college because the cost of that same course as a college student is ridiculously higher than the cost it is to take as a high schooler. And this way they are earning credit both for high school and for college. They're getting that great start to their education. They're getting some of those college classes out of the way, which lightens their load when they're a full-time college student. And then they can take it with them wherever it is that they plan to go. So dual enrollment is definitely something to look into and determine if that's something that might work for your student. And that is something that we are gonna start looking at more closely uh, as we move into the summer because we will be signing up for a couple of those courses next year. And I should add, when I was doing the research on the cost of dual enrollment classes at some of our state schools, it wasn't that much more than it would cost me to purchase a full curriculum packet for a similar course just to do as high school credit. And we get the added benefit again that she's gonna get the high school credit covered but then also earn college credit for it. And so those bigger savings are definitely gonna be there when she hits college. So to me, it's definitely worth it because we're saving money overall, not just through high school, but through college. Overall, it can be more expensive to homeschool in high school than it did when our kids were younger. But think about it. They have bigger textbooks, they have test booklets, lab kits. Sometimes they're gonna need a computer or special computer programs. These are all just things that cost more money. But that doesn't mean we have to completely break our budgets in order to give our kids a quality homeschooled education through the high school years. So if you have any additional tips on ways to save money or homeschool on a budget through high school, leave a comment down below. If you have questions about any of the tips I have mentioned, you can also leave a comment and I'd be happy to answer those for you as well. Be on the lookout because the next video in this series will talk about the ways that we saved money and we had to save money a lot <laughs> when my kids were younger. And I'll be sharing that in a future video. Thanks so much for joining me today, everybody. Wish y'all the best. Happy homeschooling. See you in the next one. Mm -hmm.